Good afternoon, everyone. Today I will be speaking on axial length and refractive error in myopia management. I would like to start by thanking Designs for Vision, Optometry Australia, and Oculus for providing me with an opportunity to present our work. I would also like to acknowledge my co-authors, Thomas John from the Brian Holland Vision Institute and David Kern from Oculus, who were instrumental in developing the nomogram. Some disclosures are the co-invented on multiple patents and patent applications related to myopia control. I'm a salaried employee of BHVI and receive no other benefits. And BHVI has commercial interest in myopia control and BHVI and Oculus have a commercial relationship. We are all aware of the rising prevalence of myopia and attempts to stem the epidemic. In terms of myopia management, they can be categorized into twofold. Those that attempt to delay the delay or prevent the onset of myopia, and then for those that are already myopic, attempts to slow the progression of myopia. In this regard, I found this cartoon to be funny as it seems to work both for coronavirus, the times that we are living in, as well as for myopia as a negative refractive error. With respect to preventing the onset of myopia, evidence indicates that outdoor time is the only strategy that has a role to play. The graph on the left shows that with increasing time outdoors in excess of two hours per day, it was found to be effective in reducing the risk by nearly half. In comparison, in those that are already myopic, there are a number of options that are available that can slow the progression of myopia and show fairly good efficacy. Spectacle lenses, for a long time, the efficacy wasn't great, but a new generation of spectacle lenses with multiple segments appears to be quite effective. Contact lenses, those that incorporate multifocal-like elements, as well as extended depth of focus contact lenses, are seen to be effective. Similarly, it has been known for a long time that orthokeratology and atropine, uh, including low-dose atropine, is effective in slowing the progression of myopia. So what exactly are the parameters we use to define and track myopia? Looking at the definitions, there are now two well-established definitions for myopia. The World Health Organization definition categorizes myopia as a spherical equivalent refractive error of minus 0.5 diopters or worse. And the IMI, or the International Myopia Institute's definition is the same. There is a difference in the definition for high myopia. The WHO definition is useful for categorizing populations at risk and has a lower threshold of minus 5 diopters, whereas the IMI one is useful at an individual level. But with both of these, you can see that only spherical equivalent refractive error is the parameter that is mentioned. In research studies, we use both spherical equivalent refractive error as well as axial lens to track progression but clinically, only spherical equivalent has been used so far. On the face of it, it is simple enough to diagnose myopia on the basis of uh, spherical equivalent. However, we know that refraction can be subjective refraction, objective cycloplegic refraction, as well as objective non-cycloplegic refraction. And there are differences between these techniques. And we also know that non-cycloplegic refraction, especially in younger children, leads to overestimation of myopia. However, in many countries, cycloplegics cannot be used. And therefore, in those countries, non-cycloplegic refraction is the only measure that is used to try and detect as well as monitor progression of myopia. In terms of cycloplegic refraction, we know that if cycloplegia is used, it means extra chair time and resources. So there are a number of issues that we have to deal with when we think about just what we call simply refractive error, and therefore it is really not that simple. So what are the parameters are there to track myopia? We know that myopia is an eye that is simply longer than normal. And we've heard that excessive axial elongation underlies the pathological changes that we see at the back of the eye, such as myopic macular degeneration, posterior staphyloma. However, there is no normative data that exists for eye length. Having such data may help us understand the risk of developing myopia or high myopia, as well as help us understand the role of other optical elements, such as crystalline lens or cornea in the development of myopia. So when we look at the data here, we see that axial length alone is not useful to diagnose myopia. 
In this graph here of 29,000 eyes of children of Asian ethnicity, we have axial length on the x-axis and refractive error on the y-axis. And when you consider just the emetropic eyes alone or the plano refractive error, you can see that the axial length can vary anywhere from 21 to 25 millimeters. And this indicates that other optical components such as cornea and crystalline lens have a role to play in refractive error. However, looking at the data a bit more closely, you can see that you will be able to extract some useful information. For example, if you look at axial length of greater than 25 millimeters, you can see that most of them are myopic or nearly all of them are myopic. And in addition, if we consider other parameters, for example, age or gender, we might be able to understand the axial length parameter much better. And indeed, in this graph here, you see that the axial length increases as age increases. And clearly, the axial length of uh, children of Asian ethnicity is much higher in comparison to children of uh, Caucasian ethnicity. Additionally, you see in this slide here that when you consider corneal curvature along with axial length, um, and that is called the AL by CR ratio, it has a better or a more significant association with spherical equivalent in comparison to axial length alone. Axial length alone is the graph uh, given to your left. And this has been found previously. Eyes with ALCR ratio of three and above are highly likely to be myopic. So what we're finding is that when you start to look at the data or examine the axial length data a bit more closely, such as um, age or with corneal curvature, there are some significant associations. More importantly, for monitoring progression, progression of myopia, eye length measurements or axial length uh, measurements are more accurate than spherical equivalent. Why is that so? If you look at the refract repeatability of refractive error measurements, you can see that the repeatability of subjective refraction is plus or minus 0.5 diopters, and the values for non-cycloplegic refraction are much higher. Uh, you can see that the variability is up to 0.63 diopters. Cycloplegic order refraction is accurate, but in comparison to what you see with axial length uh, measurements, where the repeatability is plus or minus 10 to 50 microns, mostly it's around 15 to 20 microns, and that's less than 0.12 diopter, you can begin to see that um, considering axial length changes is a much better way to monitor progression than spherical equivalent. So at BHVI, we set about developing axial length nomograms or percentile curves. Essentially, there were three steps. The first step, we gathered data from 24,500 eyes from children and young adults aged 4 to 18 years from three studies conducted in Asia with the help of our collaborators from Shanghai Eye Disease Prevention and Treatment Center. In step two, we categorize the axial length and ALCR by age um, into percentile curves. And then we considered the agreement between axial length and ALCR curves and also looked to see if there were any differences between genders. And in step three, we tried to estimate the spherical equivalent refractive error based on age, axial length, as well as ALCR ratio. And this is what the nomogram looks like. Axial length on the left and ALCR on the right. You can see that at age four years, the axial length was quite small, uh, ranging from about 20.5 to 23 millimeters and increases significantly with age, but starts to show a flattening effect from about 13 years of age. But in the higher percentiles, it appears that the curve is continuing to rise. Uh, we will get into this a little bit more in the latest slides, but it suffices to say that the correlation between AL and ALCR curves improved with age. Remember that these are for Asian eyes. And with ALCR ratios, you start to see ALCR ratios of three and above from six years of age onwards. 
The table on the top provides the 10th, 50th, 90th, and 97th percentile for age categories. Interestingly, we also found a gender difference. The axial length of males was much greater than that of females, and or said simply, for a given percentile, males had a higher axial length value compared to the females. So if you were to consider the 50th percentile um, that is given in the graphs here, the light blue line, you can see that um, it was approximately 25.4 in males versus 25 in females. So we developed the percentile curves, and this is where Oculus stepped in with a very innovative device that measures both refractive error as well as axial length. I won't go into the details of the instrument and how it functions, as you will no doubt hear about it in much greater detail elsewhere in the pack of presentations. But the axial length measurements utilized partial coherence interferometry technique that is now considered to be the gold standard for axial length measurements. So we decided to collaborate and bring to the practitioner a unique myopia management tool that incorporates percentile charts. So when you, the practitioner, you examine a child and take a measurement, you can see where they are on the percentile curve. The percentile curves are gender-based and are provided for ages 4 to 18. Importantly, they also help you to monitor progression and, and determine if there is a change in the pattern of eye growth. Thus, they also help evaluate the efficacy of treatment if the child is on any myopia control strategy. We also try to estimate the spherical equivalent based on axial length, um, and it, this is just to try and give you some understanding of the risk uh, when it is translated to a spherical equivalent range. So let's consider an example. These are just demos. The current age of this child is 15 years and they're of East Asian ethnicity. These percentile charts are currently available to be used only for those of Asian ethnicity as they were based on data from Asian eyes. We do hope to develop nomograms for other ethnicities fairly soon. On this chart here, you can see their axial length uh, at the present time, as well as from three years ago. And that's given us the green band, and the uh, axial length from three years ago is at the start of the green band, and the current axial length is at the end of that green band. Their axial length is below the lowest percentile curve um, that we have, and they are myopic, but you can see that their corneas are extremely steep. So this nomogram identifies the current percentile, and in addition, we also provide an estimate of myopia at an adult age. The refractive error estimates incorporate ALCR ratios and have a wide band of confidence intervals for the reasons that we discussed previously. And in this case, they estimate that the eye may have a refractive error ranging anywhere from zero diopters to about 3.75, minus 3.75 diopters. And at the present time, you can see from the panel on the left that they are about minus um, one and a half diopters, approximately one and a half diopters myopic. This is another example of an eye introduced to ortho K. You can see their axial length at the start and you can see that the eye growth pattern changed with treatment and it looks like they went from about maybe about 60th percentile to about 50th percentile. To the right you see a future estimate of refractive error at adult age that is 18 years of age and it ranges anyway from minus 2 to minus 5 diopters. This is again another example to simply illustrate what you can get out of this um, nomogram or percentile chart. Here you can see that the child had uh, two visits prior to initiating treatment with atropine and ortho K. And as you can see, their growth uh, pattern was quite uh, rapid and seemed to be much higher than what you would expect for a starting percentile curve. So they were progressing quite rapidly. And then the pattern changed when they went into ortho K and atropine. And again, you know, there is a future estimate or estimate for future refractive error given to the right. In addition to estimating the risk of progression, this software also allows you to consider other risk factors. Um, and based on the information provided, it gives you a, a little risk profile. So it looks at things like number of myopic parents, 
outdoor activity time as well as near activity time. And then there is a summary sheet where you can see a compilation of all the evaluations, um, the data evaluation as well as the risk profile evaluation that you can use to explain to the parents or the carers of the children. And then it also allows you to input the treatment recommendations. Uh, what the, um, so it lists all the present um, myopia control strategies that are available and what you as a practitioner advise for that particular individual. So it's a composite, comprehensive piece that brings together all the information, both uh, with respect to the eye growth uh, patterns as well as the risk profiles in one single uh, sheet. In summary, the new innovative device from Oculus called Myopia Master is a single instrument that allows you to collect information on spherical equivalent refractive error, axial length, and corneal curvature at the press of a button. Additionally, in working with Oculus, we are able to bring to you, the practitioner, a comprehensive myopia management tool that incorporates axial length measurements as well as other risk evaluation uh, measurements. The myopia management tool is quite unique with percentile curves or axial length to help you understand the normal growth patterns of the eye and is based on a large data set. Clearly, we have much more work to do to bring such information for other populations. The percentile curves form the basis to track progression of eye length both with and without treatment and also aid in having some understanding of future risk of myopia. Thanks very much for your attention.